Hello to the dopest of dope villages. Welcome to Laughter Permitted. I'm Julie. She's Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Jules. Today's guests further confirm our village is dope. I love these two women so much. We are talking all about the new women's professional soccer team in Los Angeles, Angel City Football Club, which just played its home opener at the Bank of California Stadium in front of a sold-out crowd of 22,000. Our guests are two of the team's founders, Julie Ehrman and Kara Nortman. Most important part is they won that game. I'd just like to add that. Uh, And Julie, or Jules number one, as I call her, is president of Angel City, and Kara is a managing partner at Upfront Ventures, the largest venture capital firm based in Los Angeles. And we find out how Angel City came to be, the role co-founder actress Natalie Portman played in that. She is essentially the catalyst behind it all. And... We also discuss what sets Angel City apart. One note, I am a co-owner of the team as well, along with 13 other U.S. women's national team players that are part of a larger, awesome, I might add, ownership group. So get comfortable listening. It's Jules number one and Kara Norman. Kick back, relax, and unwind. Let's have a good time. So bright, talking and laughing combined. Feeling alright, get comfortable listening. It's laughter permitted. Let's go, party people! Are we ready? Are we situated? Do we have our mics plugged in? Jules, number yes. one, can you hear us? Kara, I can, can you- hear you loud and clear. Yes. I can hear you, Captain, my captain. Oh, fabulous. Let's go. Fresh off the season opener, sold out crowd at the bank, 22,000 people rocking it. And you two, alongside Natalie Portman, have been at this for a very long time. Jules, number one, please tell us what did that moment mean to you? Uh, It was a surreal, electric, magical we had worked two years to we really build what was, you know, most people thought we couldn't do. Um, and it wasn't just one thing, right? We wanted to build a global brand. We wanted to sell out our first game and we wanted to win our first game um, and create an, an entertainment experience. We always talked about from the beginning that we wanted this to be a spectacle. We wanted it to be an event. We wanted you to want to come and have a good time, whether you played soccer or dinner, whether you knew soccer or didn't, didn't. And uh, it was incredible in that one moment in our first game that we achieved every single one of those games, that the fans had an incredible safe time. The players won in an incredible fashion, scoring their first goal within the first three minutes. And then the world afterwards, you know, shared our story um, about the team and what we built and how they performed. I mean, everybody worked for that victory and everyone got credit for that victory. And um, I don't think that happens really often. Mm. Kara? Nordy. Thank you, uh, Foudy. Um, <laughs> you know, I think um, for me, I'm, I'm a very kind of goal oriented person. And so sometimes I have a hard time just sitting in the presence and in the moment without thinking about what's the next mountain to climb. And um, I just feel like it was this mosaic of joy and gratitude and love and warmth. Um, from the team to the community to all the little quiet moments that I really appreciated um, getting there so early um, to to Julie and just it's such a deep appreciation for Julie and Natalie and just, you know, you just sort of look at all these butterfly effects that got you there and it does seem surreal. But, you know, one thing I was thinking about this morning was or actually yesterday and I reached out to one of the coaches is I walked right into the stadium initially and Julie always tells me where I, Jules one always tells me where I need to go. And sometimes I forget where I'm supposed to be. And so I'm just wandering around the stadium, you know, wondering where Fan Fest might be. And I kind of wander out onto the field and all the commentators were there. So I was with Lori and Allie and we had this fun interaction, but then all the coaches came out and they just started kicking around the balls. And um, they do that beforehand and they kind of warm themselves up that way. And they invited me out on the field to kick, kick oh balls with God. them. 
so I'm out there in my like Sol Rosa Nike Air Force One kicking balls with Dan, like the goalie coach in the train. And it was just like, I just, that was like one of those moments where I was like, God, this is pure joy. And I'm just going to mm. sit in this pure joy and, and love every second of it. <laughs> Warming up for the game. I love it. Words you use like joy and magic. This is a unique situation for someone who has never heard of Angel City FC, or maybe in conversation sometimes when people say, well, what do you, what do you do? How would you describe Angel City FC to someone? Jules, one, you take it, my friend. I would say uh, Angel City is a new professional women's soccer team in LA that is changing the landscape of soccer, women's soccer, women's sports, and how community is part of a, an organization from the beginning. And I, I would probably start in a different direction, which is why we're great co-founders. Um, <laughs> she, 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 she usually says it more eloquently than me, but I, I think we used to in the beginning, and I still think of it this way, talk about how it's, it's bigger than the game, it's bigger than the pitch. Um, it is a brand and it is a community. And so for so long, we were doing this without even knowing, you know, kind of a single player and how that would come together. Now that's sort of like the human element of this is what makes it so gratifying. Um, and there's a lot that's been mentioned about our ownership base and the glitz and the glamour sometimes, you know, and, and, but I think that the thing, the thing is like, I was, I've, I've written up a list of questions in, it, that I want to ask people who are individuals who would invest in any company I'm a part of as a venture capitalist. And a lot of this is like, there might be fancy names in our cap table, you know, um, the people who invested in our business. But when you see Jen Garner, you know, when you see Uzo, when you see these women who showed up when it was not a thing, the pride and the joy and the intrinsic motivation and the connectivity around it, that then I think, you know, it does spill over to the players. And so to me, it's a community and I've never, ever in my life seen stakeholder alignment and community um, evolve like this. And it's a huge testament to Jules One because you can bring people in with all the right reasons, but actually figuring out how to get people to want to show up to our quarterly Zooms and like want to show up to photo shoots where they like they love showing up and seeing their other friends in the cap That's like nearly, I haven't seen it done before. Um, so it is a brand, it's a community, but also uh, aspirationally, you know, I was talking to Vanessa Giles um, at the after party. She's adorable, by the way. She's like wandering around and I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, I don't know, I'm looking for my friends. Have you seen any of them? I said, I'll be your friend, you know? Um, uh, and, uh, but anyway, Canadian. but she said, she was talking about playing in France and talking about playing for these clubs. Um, you know, she's talking about Angel City, but then she's talking about playing for these clubs who've been around for 150 years. And we have to remember we're in year two or three. And, you know, I think the dream is um, what's happening in 150 or 200 years when Julie and I are in another dimension. So um, that's this what is, is. This is all I know. We're undefeated. So <laughs> that's it. That's right. Three points. Top of the board. Undefeated. Good. Let's go. What is the origin story of Angel City? Um, in 2015, I went to the, to the women's finals in Vancouver, um, and I was a fan and it was one of the best experiences of my world life. Cup. World cup. Yeah. World cup. And, you know, three Carly Lloyd goals, Abby Wambach draped in the flag. I like muscled my way through the crowd with my daughters to get a photo with Alex Morgan and then, you know, and Crystal Dunn and Kelly O'Hara and just like all these women who were like our modern, you know, the modern Julie Foudy's and Mia Hams. And it was like, whoo, back like this is amazing. But the stands were amazing and people were painting faces and making friends. And it felt like this joyous, you know, kind of vibe that it like, I love going to NFL and NBA games and I'm just a sports fan, but it felt a little different in some way that really like resonated with me. And I'm like, God, why does this have to happen every four years? But then what happened, and I found this picture last night, I forgot I had it, is that I literally went to nine stores trying to find a Megan Klingenberg jersey. And, you know, Kling was actually one of the first friends I made, I guess, who like taught me the sport and she was working with the US National Team Players Association, but I couldn't find one. I couldn't even buy one online. I could not find an actual jersey. So I finally found like 
a t-shirt with a 22 Klingenberg on it because my middle daughter was a defender and loved Kling. And I love that about her, that oh. she wanted Kling, right? Like, right. That, doesn't that warm your soul, Fatty? Yeah, it does. I love that because that's, that's, you know, you're not, you're one you're going to find, as you mentioned, on the front cover, which is great. <laughs> And then, by the way, my little one, who's now almost nine and was two at the time, was like half naked on the ground with empty beer cups that were not ours, <laughs> looking like a total hooligan. And then there's like a press jersey right behind her in my favorite picture. So I've showed that to Kristen. So there's all these moments where you're like, God, do dreams come true? Yes, they come true. But that was 15, went to nine stores, came back, tried to watch the NWSL. It was being streamed on Yahoo. It literally looked like somebody was streaming it from 10,000 feet up in the stands. I remember watching Tobin Heath play for Portland and being like, I mean, I can't even watch this. Like she's like thousands of feet away from me. Right. Um, and then I just started talking about it. Cause what I know is that um, if you can't find content, you can't buy merch after a major activation event, like the world cup, you lose interest. There's just like, you have to direct market and create like attention around this. Um, I did find Instagram and it was sort of still like the emerging days of Instagram. And, you know, there were some pretty good Instagrammers on the team over the years. I'm thinking Allie Long, I'm thinking Ashlyn Harris, like addicted to their Instagrams for quite a while. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, fast forward, I met Becca Roo in 2018 and I met Natalie Portman in 2018. But I was like talking about it for three years before I met him. And the reason I met Becca was because one of my friends was like, you got to talk to this woman. She's amazing. She just spoke at our, she just spoke at our event and you talk about soccer all the time and like, go, go. <laughs> and so Becca became, you know, she became my mentor. Um, she asked me to help advise her and the players union on how to build revenue streams to like fund actually being able to, you know, get jerseys with players names on it. And I said, I I don't even know what it means to be an advisor to a union. How about I'll just be your friend um, <laughs> and I'll help you anytime you want help. Just call me. And Nordy, like quickly, I'll, I'll jump in is that Becca Ruzzi, executive director of the U.S. Women's National Team Players Association. Oh, thank you, Lynn. Yes. And like the, you know, the unsung hero, at least for Angel City, because you know, she th it's like, it's like classic. I mean, it's like classic thing. I tell everybody now, I always run around trying to find young, younger people, usually women, every occasion, a man um, to mentor in venture capital or et cetera. And they end up mentoring me. It's like, if you, you know, one of them is now one of my partners here who called me for advice forever. And then I'm like, Hey, why am I not trying to hire you? Um, <laughs> so Becca became my mentor and friend and we ended up, um, I got really into like supporting the pay equity fight. Um, and Hey, how can I do this? How can I lean into my networks and contacts? And then lo and behold, you know, I, I had become friendly with Natalie through our activism work. She was doing work in the entertainment industry, which is sort of well known. And I was doing similar work in the in the tech industry. I was one of 15 women that helped start this organization, all raised, started by Aileen Lee and Jess Lee and a bunch of other amazing women. Um, and anyway, we became friends and we had lunch. Um, there's a whole long story around how that happened, but I basically caught the quick version is I was on stage at an event representing tech, which is so boring relative to entertainment, though what makes it all work? And I said, go make a friend. There's all these wonderful people here that you have no reason to do business with. Um, go make a friend, have lunch, don't do business, make a friend. Like that's what life's about. <laughs> and give your phone number to someone, even if it's scary and if they're weird, you can block them. And the person who came up to me was Natalie. She oh, gave me her number. Stop Amazing. it. You don't I've know that story? That's incredible. I never heard that. Oh, you don't know that story? I don't know that story. Uh -uh. Oh, yeah. So I went up to this woman, Angela Robinson, who's super cool. And we've ended up traveling together and throwing events together. The person who came up to me was the queen of Star Wars. OK, <laughs> so Natalie comes up to me and she's like, hey, I want to give you my number. It's still in my phone that way. And she put it in as Natalie P. And she's like, I'm about to go film something, but I'd love to get to know you. I'm super curious about what you do. And I love what you said or something like that. And oh, my God. Yeah, it all makes sense now. Neither Jules knew that story? No. no. No, I just assumed you guys met a bunch through activism and started talking. I didn't know it was much more of a prescribed direct hit on you. Yeah. That's kind of pretty cool, actually. I think she stalked you. I, that's what it sounds like to me. Fatty, on occasion, I'm good on stage. So, you know. <laughs> she's like, this one's <laughs> rad. I want to get to know her. She's, she's <laughs> listening to you. How oh. cool is that? That is fantastic. 
so I, I, so that was probably June of 2018. And I was already like knee deep into getting to know Becca and everything. But, um, the, we didn't actually end up having the conversation or actually getting together for our, like our one-on-one -on -one lunch until December. And so we talked a couple times, but we were still in the get to know each other phase. And then very last minute we went, we, we somehow like planned a lunch two days later, right? It's like, how do you plan something? You got to put it on the calendar six months in advance or just call me last minute. I am your friend who will go to <laughs> Vegas or France for a world <laughs> cup with no notice. <laughs> Um, and anyway, I mean, it kind of took off from there because I, for the last 10 minutes of the lunch, we talked, we talked about almost everything else. She actually randomly texted me earlier in the day, asking me to help her with her groceries. Cause she got me confused with her husband. So the whole thing was like, <laughs> it's like a fun day. Um, and, uh, at the end of it, like last five minutes, I was like, oh, Hey, there's a one thing I'm super passionate about. I was just going to put it like out there. And she like lit up and she said, oh my gosh, my son is super into like he'll wear a messy jersey one day and a rapino jersey the next day yeah. and she's like and i just heard abby wambach speak and i talked to her about this and like how can i help and so that's when we started i put her together with becca she had lunch with a player or two and that's when we started planning this april event in 2019 for the friendly game leading up to the world cup and then again the world cup brought us together because I, we like, we spent probably like many hours like texting and trying to figure out how to go to the World Cup together. And that never happened. We like, I went without her a few times and she was voicing over and stuff, but it was like the friendship around the logistics of the World Aww. Cup in a way that really built it out. And then I'll fast forward. I mean, coming out of the World Cup obviously was amazing. We threw some more events with the players, tried to get more people together. And then Natalie really did text me. I mean, I have it. My husband was, uh, my husband, we were on the way to my husband's Ironman. Jake would like that shout out. Uh, we were on a plane <laughs> to Lake Placid where he was going to go do an Ironman, which I think is crazy, but that's a whole separate story. And I was writing these iMessage essays to Natalie about like socialism and unions and pay equity. And she just kept writing back to me one sentence like, hey, I think we should actually start a team. And then, you know, from there, it kind of went from there. And then I um, was going to go to El Trafico, which is the big LAFC um, Galaxy rivalry to really see right. what, like, amazing a stadium experience would look like. And LAFC and the Galaxy have, like, done such right. an amazing job with their community. And I invited Julie off of our pickup basketball game to come with me, like, randomly. We were just, if I hadn't gone to that game, if she hadn't gone to that game, yeah. I was like, hey, really? I'm going to this game, and I think there's an opportunity here, and I've been looking into it from a market standpoint, talking to a few people, but there's a ton of work to do, and I would need someone to run it. And I don't know if that's you or not, but let's just start so with cool. going to a game. Are you open to it? And that's the story. Wait, and your pickup basketball team name is? Julie. Uh, Wild Feminist to Tech Basketball no. League. No, no, no. There's no tech in there. That's a bad brand. I think it's the Wild <laughs> Feminist it? Basketball Club. Mm, okay. Wild Feminist. <laughs> Wild Feminist is definitely, we can agree on you, that. So we're I, good. I feel you're more inclusive than just tech. We yeah, are. True. We are. And there are way more people than just tech there. Yeah. Though yeah. I do call it my pickup tech basketball game and that we're <laughs> open-minded to all. <laughs> All right, so you guys go to El Trafico, and then you say, "Jules, come run this thing," right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we were we were literally walking out of the basketball game, and Kara was, you know, we were, I was asking her questions about the World Cup, and she was like, "You know, I, Natalie and I have been thinking about maybe bringing a women's professional team to LA," and I said, "Professional what?" And she said, "Professional soccer." She said, "It's part of the National Women's Soccer League, the NWSL," and I said, "What's the NWSL?" Like. Didn't know there was professional league, didn't know where to watch it, didn't know who was on it. Um, and luckily she did not take that ignorance as uh, anything other than the fact that the league needed to do a lot more to bring like crazy sports fans like me under their umbrella. Um, but she said, look, you know, there's a lot of work to do. We're not really sure how to go about doing it. Would you be open, like, would you be open to coming to a game with me this weekend? We can go check it out. And then I'll introduce you to all the folks that I've been talking to and see if there's a path to figure out like how we would actually go about doing that. And um, of course I jumped at the chance being a, you know, an ex athlete myself and, you know, being born and raised here in LA and loving sports and, you know, feeling, I think, you know, an incredible sense of obligation to women's sports to find a way to make it grow. Cause it gave so much to me growing up, but not knowing I'd ever be able to do that. It's just, I think until Angel City came on the scene, I don't think it was something you thought was possible.
Why were you so bullish on this working? So I'm an entrepreneur, right? So every time you try to build a new product, um, the first question you have to answer from venture capitalists like Karen Norman is like, what is the product market fit? Like, why is somebody going to want this? Why is someone going to need this, right? And then when you look at women's soccer, those questions are already answered for you. Like, you don't even have to think about it. It's like, you have the best athletes in the world. You have the most victorious athletes in the world at their sport. They win all the time. They are household names. I don't have to educate you on who they are. Like, you know who Rapino is and Alex Morgan and Christian Press is and you know, Crystal Dunn. Like, you know who they are, right? And you actually set your clock to watch them play every four years. No matter what sport you love, you will sit down and watch the World Cup and you will sit down and watch them play the Olympics because you know where you are watching excellence. And you can't say that with other sports. Every single time I tune in, it's going to be excellent. That doesn't happen, but it does with women's sports and what has been built here around the U.S. women's national team. So knowing that you had all of those ingredients to begin with, and then the second part of what you have to do is, all right, I just have to make sure people know where they're playing, when they're playing, and how to get there. Like that's a, That seems like an easier problem to solve than educating people on who they are or why you should right. watch. Right. Yeah, and I mean, I would say like when I was doing my like kind of early discovery work, um, it I was, just love it, that early discovery work. That sounds very venture capitalist. Yeah. Is that fair oh. to say? Because I'm in journalism, I know nothing about your world. Is that is that a um, term? The, the, maybe the better way to say it was when I was running around talking to a lot of people and writing a lot of notes to myself and Natalie. Does that sound better? <laughs> No, I mean, by the way, one of the things I've realized is like I show up as just a fan and a consumer all the time and then I'll end up writing up like a business document and be like, hey, Julie, I wanted to like share all of my insights from the Barcelona Real Madrid game. And I like just truly went to enjoy it. And then I have like a three page document on <laughs> how Spanish soccer is different than U.S. soccer and what can we do together and blah, 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 blah. But um, I, 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 I'd say like discovery work for me means when did I switch to intention? around hmm. trying not to let Natalie Portman down. Um, and in the beginning, <laughs> it was like, I didn't, I didn't need to be involved with it. It wasn't like I went into this being like, okay, this is going to be my life's work, which, which it now feels like, like my life's work. I mean, it really does. I get emotional around it. Like, it's just the most unexpected thing. I love being a venture capitalist. It's the best job in the world. If it's a fit, if it's not, it's by the way, the worst job in the world, but that's a whole other topic. <laughs> um, but I get to meet, you know, incredible founders who see the world differently than everybody else. And the kind of my job is to like, say like, do I believe that what you believe is true? This one thing is going to change or there's a reason why you could build this thing differently. And then a bunch of people tell me why I'm kind of an idiot for believing that. And then six months later, they're like, oh my gosh, I see it. Now can I give you money? And like Angel City was kind of the, the most beautiful example of that. Sometimes it takes five years. Sometimes we'll fund something and then like 20 years later, fund the same concept. And we're like, oh, it's finally happening. It was just late. But when I was doing my early discovery work, um, kind of around the time when I brought Julian, I mean, there's two, two things that were happening. One was a lot of people I trusted told me that it wouldn't work. Just consistently, all the reasons why it wouldn't work. Um, you'll never get a broadcast deal. You'll never like get the stadium sorted. You'll not, you know, just a bunch of reasons. And then I kind of like got my head around, I was trying to get my head around like, what's the one thing I need to believe to make this work in the early days? And for me, it was um, that we, I, I mean, like I had to believe that we could get a broadcast deal of some level um, in the first few years coming out because that was the step function in all other sports leagues. And the great irony is like, and then we built a model and I did this with Julie, um, uh, in the early days that sort of showed um, ticketing levels and sponsorship levels, which we've dramatically over exceeded, but we were sort of building it initially. And this is what investors wanted to see with, okay, here's the like 200 year vision. We want to show that women's sports can be valued as highly as the Dallas Cowboys, Manchester United, et cetera. We know a lot about digital. So we think we can get really scrappy and innovative around new revenue streams like and sponsorships against them and IP yeah. against it, et cetera, that we'll just have to innovate around because we're not going to have all the traditional ones to start. And then as soon as you get one of these big broadcast deals, it works. And so it was Instagram, you know, in a lot of ways. Um, 
that prove that to me because you could just see the followers, right? Like even now in other sports, you know, the top most followed person on Instagram coming out of the NCAA Final Four is a woman. I yeah. think Paige, uh, Paige Bruckner, that I think is her name. Yeah. yeah. And like the seven out of top 10 are women because women are awesome at content. Um, not that men aren't, but like seven out of 10. And so that was the one thing. And then one other thing I just have to say to give a little bit of a love letter to my co-founder, Julie Hare, because I was sitting there this weekend and I'm like, we could have gotten everything right. And if if Julie hadn't come in and actually like built this team and built this brand yeah. and done it with the generosity of spirit and fearlessness and running through walls that sometimes made me nervous, um, you know, we could have 2000 people here and it could like suck. You know? <laughs> So, yeah. you know, it's uh, it's just amazing to It's never going to suck. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. It was amazing. It was amazing. I mean, we keep getting texts all weekend long from people saying like this was yeah. better than the Super Bowl for me. Like this was Aww. the best sporting event I've ever gone to. I posted that in yeah. my Instagram story. It like blew my mind, but we got lots of stuff like that. But the one thing I was going to say is um Julie talks about product market fit. That's the thing we talk about in venture. And so I just pointed, finally pointed to Instagram and Alexis believed it, but we got about a hundred no's. Julie and I just like, we didn't know where to raise money from. Like we got a hundred no's yeah. um, from a lot of people who are now invested and we love. Um, but the other thing that's really important to mention is founder, founder market fit, founder product fit. Mm. And it was in this very special way, obviously with Julie, but also with Natalie, you know, I mean, it's just... Yeah. She yeah. showed up like selflessly and did the work and poked holes in our thinking. And, yeah. you know, somebody was living in the a... right? She like, was engaged. Yeah, it wasn't just engaged. like, hey, and... run with this, gals. I'm in. No, I mean, we had so many sort of face to face meetings before COVID shut down. And we all just play a very different role. And I think that's really hard when you have co founders, right? Because you hear more often than not, the, you know, the growing pains of it, you know, they start to, there's, there's infighting, everyone's trying to jockey for more power or more control. And we just have this really unique relationship where we all, each know what our strengths are. And we're yeah. also really good at asking for help when we need it or yeah. asking for direction. It's really a support. I mean, it's really incredible. Like it's a really in a supportive relationship versus one where it's competitive. It's never yeah. been competitive between the three of us. Yeah. Oh, you feel it. That, and that's, I, I mean, all the credit to you three in terms of the energy you set for this space. I always describe it when I tell people, I'm like, it's like nothing I've ever been a part of because everything is, what's possible? This is our upside. This is our potential. It's It has always been in the past. Just be grateful you have a damn team and shut, shut up and sit down right. was always the feeling. And this is just, yeah. the energy is fantastic. It's so wonderful to be a part of. You can... It, it's visceral. You can feel it. It's pulsating the way that you see the energy of the owners and what you guys have have built. And it's replicable. And I think we just keep like kind of, you yeah. know, given the playbook we yeah. gave to others, but it also is both replicable and you have to really go into it with intention um, to it's it's women, it's male allies, it's being comfortable in your own skin, it's asking for help, it's making sure you have people with a growth mindset, which sounds like, you know, something you would tell your fifth grade class, but you can really tell, you know, and there are people who don't have a growth mindset who are great partners, and they're going to tell us constantly all the things that aren't going to work and go wrong. They just, you know, it's just like it's finding like the divine feminine and the modern masculine and pulling it together in a way where like people can just show up differently. And so anyway, I think this is going to be the future across men's sports, women's sports companies. Like it's our conscious future if we can have it. And maybe it could only happen with three women in our forties where we've both had, we've all had like our ups and our downs. Natalie, by the way, is mostly in her thirties. Like she's so much younger, <laughs> but you know, she's been in the public eye for so long that I don't think that happens unless you really know who you are and what lights you up yeah. and what you're looking for at this stage of your life and career. And, you know, my life has changed because I've found two new left, like ride or die, you know, best friend, yeah. co-founders, and we fight and we argue, but we do it with tools that yeah. allow us yeah. to get through it in a way where we feel good about our conflict and realize that that's the, the best way to engage with your co-founders and your friends. Yeah. So, yeah. What tools? Oh, I'm so glad you asked, Lynn. <laughs> Oh, we do push-ups. No, I'm kidding. Um, we, um, uh, I'm a very big believer, and Julie's a big believer, and Natalie's not a big believer in in uh, coaching, like executive coaching, leadership development, 
Um, and a lot of the language we use around that has become common, right? And just sort of, you know, um, so yeah, and so I work with a group called Conscious Leadership Group, which has been kind of life-changing for me. Julie works with a different group. Natalie works with her own set of folks. And um, so when we have conflict, we actually can show up and actually use different words and different language. And it doesn't get overheated or it does. And we acknowledge like we're in a, I'm in a moment where like, I just disagree with you and I'm unable to not be right. I am unable to show up with curiosity and wonder right now. I just need to take a beat. Can you go talk to Natalie or Julie? Cause I'm not like, I'm not there right now. That doesn't happen that often anymore. Um, but, or it doesn't happen that often at all. And honestly, the number of conflicts we have that are major, I could count on one hand, but they all led to the right outcome. Cause whatever the outcome is, is the right outcome when you're honoring your relationship together and how you show up in debate. And I think that is the new way for organization. It's probably the thing I'm most passionate about is in venture, the kinds of companies I fund, the kind of funds that I will build. It's like, how do you bring people together and create a new systematic change around that? Because I think different kinds of people do flourish in that environment versus trying to show up and like role model the way it's been done in the past. Jules, number one, there's so much excitement for this team um, in this moment, of course. How do you, in as busy a city as Los Angeles is, right? And to put a little reality into it, how do you sustain that year in and year out, which has always proved to be the problem and the, and yeah. the hardest part of it all? It's storytelling, right? This isn't a one or done. I was talking to Freya this morning. We still have another 20 games to play. Like as incredible as that, that first game is, like we've already been, you know, last week we started planning for our second game and we're already planning for our third game, right? So how do you keep the excitement going? How do you make sure that people know that it's, that it's continuing, but it's storytelling. We have 26 players. So every single day we're telling the story of the players. We're letting you meet the team. We're letting you learn about, you know, our performance the previous week. Um, we are in the community. We are having impact. We are making a difference. And so it's really about just telling the story and finding a way for you as a fan to connect to something a part of Angel City, whether it's our players, the organization, um, maybe you're just somebody that loves to come to game day or it's all the community work we do, but it's telling the story authentically and aligning with our community on a values-based way. And then they want it, they'll, they'll come because you want to associate and spend your time with things that you believe in and you care about. Mm. And, and that alignment, that coexistence of purpose and profit, which for so long people said it was just a charitable cause, often women's sports, <laughs> but that the fact that we're finding profit on the women's sports side, um, and you're able to link it so beautifully with purpose and community, I yeah. think is, is also to your point, a huge link because it yeah, just I mean, feels so good comparatively. It does. And we see this all the time that we're unapologetic about both. Like we are going to give impact and we're going to drive for profit because if we, if we're profitable, that means the whole pie has grown. Right. And we're going to make sure that everyone understands the role that they play in that fans play a role, sponsors play a role, media partners play a role, our players play a role, right? Everyone plays a role in driving attention for the sport and then engagement in the sport. Um, it's great. If you come to a game, it's better if you bring a friend to a game, right? It's better mm -hmm. still if you buy, you know, season tickets for the team. Right. And so, so when people understand that, they can understand the individual impact that they can have. And for us, um, the mission part is so important. As Kara said at the beginning, this is bigger than a game. Like we're a brand, we're a community, we're a soccer team, and we don't um, make exceptions and we don't do trade-offs. We do all of them at once because that's how you can have the biggest impact. And it's possible. You just have to say you're doing it and do it from the beginning. It's built in our DNA. And ca call us, call me and Julie. We love like to share, like if you're interested in sports, you're interested in bringing a team to your city, you're interested in getting involved in some way. Like we, we, we want to, you know, we want to help teams start in every city in the United States at the right time and internationally, et cetera. And we need help. And we also learn from every conversation we have. So I think this is what's going to make life fun for the next 60, 70, 100 years. So <laughs> We should we should do a Natalie Portman and why don't you just give your cell phone number to all of the dope village, Kara? Totally, nine four totally, nine. Totally. <laughs> I By can't way, also believe the play, that like story. The players, I think like one last thing I'd say is just like watching those players in the first fifteen minutes, right? Everyone from Danny Weatherholt and Allie Riley and Jasmine Spencer, even Simone yeah. Charlie, like agonized sitting on the yeah. bench and Paige Nielsen, like 
they are like there there's so much energy back and forth and and just um anyway i just um i talked to all your constituents like love them and appreciate them and know you can learn from them and you know we'll be held accountable i think it's always important yeah. to say this like we're going to make mistakes and when you have a mission yeah. and a brand that comes out like this um you know it just stuff stuff always goes wrong for everyone at some point in time but we really are trying to set the foundation so that we hear from people we hear early we work on it we develop yeah. our own tools at the organization and beyond and um i think this is a wonderful opportunity to like ride the waves light the fire spread it <laughs> you know what other analogies i have build the lego blocks water the plants let the tulips oh God. and ja is... jacarandas bloom <laughs> I will tell you with the old bag players that are part of the ownership group, right? There's 14 <laughs> of us players on there that sitting in the stands, this full circle moment of sitting in the stands and literally Mia's right behind me with her family, Tisha Venturini's to one side, Abby and Glennon are on the left side of me, Shannon Box is in front of me, mm. right? Mm. And Lori Fair is walking up. We're like, dude, where have you been? Saskia Weber. I mean, you go down the list of all of us that are owners and investors and we're all sitting together as season ticket holders. And... At one point, like we were trying to get the wave started from our section. Were so you the guys who started that? Yeah, yeah. That's a and scary. literally, this FIFA guy who was sitting in the owner's box behind me goes, "Uh, I have never seen the wave started from the v VIP section before." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, that's what's wrong with men's yeah. games. There's no v VIPs starting the wave." So literally, I was like standing up, and I'd look over at Abby, and she'd get whole her, her whole section going. And <laughs> Oh, it's the yeah. best. I have to tell you, my That's favorite amazing. video clip was you teaching all the owners how to do the three clap. Like it's gone oh. around my family a thousand times. Well, because I didn't know whether it was going to work within the stadium. And so whoever Incredible. said, maybe Lisa was like, or you maybe Jules was like, Wait, do you want to practice go with anywhere, Julie, Jules number two, what's the, yeah. what is the story of that? Because that has a story with Jules number one. Oh, so during Tokyo Olympics, when we were in, soft quarantine air quotes uh they i was going batshit crazy and so i would do these videos every morning on instagram and when i got home from tokyo jules is like jules number one and and the rest of the angel city crew were all like we love the three clap and i was like what are you talking about <laughs> like, you're three clap i'm like what are you talking about they're like you start your video with three claps i go i do what <laughs> And so, good morning, party people, was how I started every video. And I didn't realize I did the three clap till it's Julie amazing. pointed That's it so out. Cool. And so Ehrman was like, we're going to make that the start of the, before the players walk out. Can you do the three clap? So they created this whole video around the three clap. But anyways, so I got to do that in front of the whole stadium. I thought it was just going to be the supporters group, by the way. I didn't know it was the whole stadium. So Jules They're number like, no. one is, uh, I'm sorry, number two is on the Jumbotron explaining yeah. what the three clap will be. Yeah, on the capital stand. Yeah, explaining what the three clap is. But before that, with just the owners, they're like, do you want to practice it with us? I was like, yeah, because I'm adding a little bit at the end. I'm doing three claps with a uh at the end. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, so owners, good. three claps and from your soul, uh. And we crushed it and the whole room went crazy. We were like, yeah. It's, it's important to note that like you, you had Billie Jean King doing the uh, and Peter yeah. Gardner doing the uh, next to like Abby and Mia. So it wasn't just that you made us all gyrate. It was who was actually doing it at that level of enthusiasm that you required. I mean, it, it just like felt like I could imagine what it was like uh, to be in the locker room in 1999. And I was like, this is just the coolest thing ever. This and by the way, this is Tisha's. Oh, <laughs> Jules one really okay. likes you, Jules two, because I'm like, hey, can I come up with a chant? Can I find our bird? And she's like, no, no, that's the supporters. That's not your job. You go back to the capital markets. You know, you know, so I'm hoping someday uh, I might develop something that Julia, you know, speaks to her the way you have. I really think there's only one way to end this interview. Yeah. yeah. Oh, clap, goes through no. the three clap. Yeah. Ready. Are you ready. Go ahead. Jules, Count us down, Jules. Yeah. All right. Are you ready from your soul? The uh. Wait, are we doing the uh? Okay, we're doing the uh too. Okay. okay. We're doing three right. clap. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. Okay. <laughs> Three clap, oh, are you ready? On three, ready. one, two, three. Oh! oh.
very important, Lynn. It comes from the soul. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Kind of like. No, 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 no. But I'm not going down that road. I'm not going down that road. We've we've been down uh, that road a few times. Been been down that road. <laughs> I did mean to mention during the interview when Kara was talking, but I didn't want to interrupt. Uh, Wait, you didn't want to interrupt? Is I interrupt you? I know. There, 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 there's always a first time. <laughs> um, very proud of myself. But then I was like, oh, see, I should have interrupted because I forgot to say it. Mm-hmm. No, but I get it in the close. Um, that she mentioned shattering some of the goals they had set. And let me just tell you what some of those records or sorry goals they shattered are 15,000 plus wow. in season ticket sales hmm. yeah the and the the stadium the bank of california only seats 22 as you saw with it being sold out with 22 so 15,000 plus in season ticket sales over 35 million in sponsorship sales before we had even played a game so angel city is crushing it in terms of being a roadmap for other teams. And they mean that. They're very serious about wanting to help create a roadmap, not just other women's soccer teams, other leagues, uh, and are, are very willing to share their wisdom. So if you are looking to start a team, talk to them. Takeaways. Lynn, go first. I wrote down in my notes while the interview went on, brilliant women (laughs) and i loved the story kara told about how she encouraged people at the conference that she had spoken at to go make a friend just go make a friend yeah and then her friend is natalie portman and (laughs) then they start a soccer team together oh that is just (laughs) recreating the mold for professional sports (laughs) oh i mean how many A-list Hollywood celebrities would walk up to Kara on stage and be like, hey, can I give you my number? I want to talk. I, I love Natalie Portman. And I love Kara Norman. Um, I had never heard that story. Julie Ehrman had never heard that story. That was a good story. My takeaway is when you get to that tipping point in anything and – the fact that they were able to get to that tipping point after so many no's, hundreds of no's, is what Kara and Julie said. And and then they said, now most of them are owners. So all a lot of that ownership group gave them, and as Kara mentioned, all the people that she trusted advised her, no, 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 no. And they just kept believing, and they kept believing, and the manifestation of that into what it is today and getting to this tipping point, um, not just for Angel City, but I think for women's sports in general, because when I was talking to Jessica Berman, the new commissioner of the NWSL just the other day, one of the first things she said is she had so many big names, owners, investors calling her wanting in. And that is a great position to be in. And that I think in large part is part of the history of Angel City and the legacy of Angel City. So very proud of that. It's awesome. What questions do you have for me today? Going Lynn takeover style. Oh, we're doing another takeover? I know. I just, I can't help myself. I just have so many questions (laughs) for you. (laughs) My God. What was your favorite moment from the home opener? Oh. Or even most meaningful? Because that had to be cool Uh. for you and... Yeah. With your teammates, Billie Jean King. Yeah. You know, I think uh, I had a very full circle, full of gratitude moment when pregame they had uh, a pink carpet, because that's one of our colors for Angel City, which we were all doing media on. And on one side of me was Billie Jean, on another side was Mia. And I was thinking back to the days when WUSA started the very first women's professional league, which we were very invested in as players, helping start it and grow it. And and it sadly um, lasted only three years. Mm-hmm. But Billie Jean was at that home opener. Wow. Mia was playing in that home opener. I wasn't playing in it. Um, but 
this moment, and Billy and I even looked at each other, and I said, do you remember the WSA home opener? How much this feels like that? And she goes, I was just having that thought. Mm. She, is she, and, and so, and then to be sitting in the stands with my kids, now looking on, who, of course, weren't alive, weren't born yet when uh, the WSA days, but for them to be looking on and then surrounded, as I said in the podcast, with all the players <laughs> on, you know, every side of us, it was, I, it was just so cool. It, and I just felt like, God, this is, I feel really blessed to be a part of this mm. and, and super grateful for Alexis Sohanian and Julie and Kara and Natalie, as, as we discussed, you know, being so instrumental in making this what it is, so really cool it was a really special night i did not go to the game however i'm wondering if you can score me some tickets this season <laughs> i might know one or two people okay sweet who have tickets i'm in making that happen yeah you gotta come to one everyone's gotta come to one they're super fun come on out join the party be there or be talked about <laughs> okay <laughs> Swaggy even wants in. Listen to her. She's like, yes, let me go, Mom. (laughs) A reminder to our listeners, please rate and leave comments on our Apple podcast page and tell a friend or 22,000 about the podcast. You know we want to spread the love and keep the dope village growing. And we also hope you'll support our sponsors as well. Ally Bank and Dick Sporting Goods. Thank you, as always, to Kate Diaz for our awesome theme music. And as always, kids, remember, sing it with us. Laughter Laughter permitted. permitted.